Hey everybody, Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. So today's project is we just got home from work. I'm waiting on the kids to get out of school and we're going to hook up the livestock trailer and go get our pigs for the season. Now I want to go over a couple things that I've learned over the last few years. I think it's my fifth year doing pigs now and every year I've tried to do something a little bit different, try to make it just a little easier for me. Both my wife and I work full time off of our farm so it's real important to me to make sure we've got kind of the proper and more, most efficient ways possible to keep these animals fed, keep them watered and keep tabs on them while we're at work. So here's a couple things I've learned over the years that have helped me greatly. Hopefully this information helps you guys out a little bit. And by all means, if you see something that you would do differently, feel free to leave that in the comments section. I'm always looking for new things to try, new ways to do things. With that being said, let me show you what I've got here. Now my pen here is set up to have 16 foot hog panels. I've got two on each side. So basically I've got a 32 by 32 pin here set up. This corner here I don't have attached yet. So basically when I come in with my livestock trailer, I'll back right up in here in the field, bring my trailer straight to this corner and I'll offload my pigs here into my pen. That's about as easy as I've figured out how to do this. Years where it's wetter when I bring them home, it tends to be a little bit more of an issue. This year we're lucky enough, I shouldn't have any issues. The next thing you need to address is depending on what month you bring your pigs home. For me right now, we're in the middle of April. We were 70 degree days yesterday. Today we're in the 50s. So I've got my pig shelter set up. I've got a bale of straw inside of my shelter here. That's gonna help keep them warm, especially on these nights where it's in the 40s. I don't really like leaving pigs out here when it's that cold, but being in Indiana, you kind of get what you get this time of year. Uh, so with that being said, I, they should be good. I'll keep tabs on them through the weekend. And then by Monday, we're supposed to be back up at warmer temperatures again, and we should be good to go. Next thing I wanted to go ahead and address was water. I've tried several different styles, everything from the nipple drinkers to I've gone to a tank style this time around. As you see here, I've got a Rubbermaid tank with a Job float valve here in the center. So this to date has been the best I've been able to come up with on getting water to pigs, keeping it to them year round and knowing that they're not drinking hot water. Cause that's something I had an issue with with the nipples is they didn't drink for long periods of time. That hose got really hot and they wouldn't be interested in the water when it was hot. Seems like this does a better job of keeping my temperatures in my water cooler during the summer months and nothing else they get in there and they splash around a little bit now i do keep a hot wire on the center of this because i don't want them laying in there throughout the year and getting the water all dirty now the water still gets dirty don't get me wrong but i don't have pigs using this thing as a pool at all through the season now we tend to use hot wire on our pigs last year was the first time we did a full hot wire setup with no hog panels and it worked out almost flawlessly i had a few issues through the year but i worked out the kinks the one thing to keep in mind or at least the, the, my experience has been is i tried doing all four walls with the hog panels and have all four walls be hot when i did my pen the first couple years what i found is the pigs freak out when they hit that wire the first couple times and then they end up being stressed out and in the center of the pen afraid to move what i found is if i put hot wire on just two sides of the pen to start out with that gives them more of a safe corner to go to they know not to come near this corner and then as the weeks progress i take away some of the hog panels i leave and i add more hot wire in they get a bigger pen too after the first couple weeks here we'll do one more move to the pasture here behind me which will be another 32 by 32 section that's pushing three weeks worth of time right there then we'll come into this pasture right here behind me and i'll give them the full 32 by 64 pin to work with and we'll move on down the pasture here as we go and by the time we get to the third move i won't have those hog panels anymore we'll be strictly on hot wire alone so that's what i found worked best for me up to this point having a training wire in there so they know not to go near that wire and then as i progress on through i'll go from one single wire like you see here to two wires and i'll take these hog panels away like i said that's enough of talking about the pin for now let's go get this truck and trailer hooked up get ready to go When it comes to picking out pigs and figuring out where to get them from every year, my first year was probably far my roughest experience. I just found an ad on Craigslist, a guy that was like an hour and a half from the house. Price looked really attractive. Didn't really know what I was getting into. I just kind of went for it. That was by far my worst year and biggest learning experience that I ever had since I started raising pigs. I ended up losing, I think three out of the first six that I bought right off the bat. I ended up calling the guy, letting him know how unpleased I was. He pretty much admitted to me that these are pigs he was getting from a big time operation and they were more or less the pigs they didn't want. So the guy ended up giving me replacement pigs. In fact, I lost three, he gave me four. I ended up losing one of those. I think I ended up getting total four that year to processing. Kind of turned me off on pigs. I ended up not wanting to do it anymore. Talked myself into doing it the next year. 
I actually found a legit breeder that breeds for 4-H. Started with three that year after having such bad luck the first year. Wanted to try just doing three, make sure I knew what I was doing. I got all three of those to processing just fine. And ever since then, I've had pretty good luck. Now last year I did lose a couple, which once again, I had a problem with the breeder and decided I wasn't gonna use that guy anymore either. I guess that's the point I'm trying to get at. You really gotta do your research and find somebody you trust and find somebody that's got a good reputation in the community. I've had a lot of luck on Facebook just on some of the different pig groups that I've been members of which you can search around and find people. And as long as you find someone that vouches for the breeder you're getting them from, you should be pretty good. Now, that being said, I am trying a new guy for the first time this year. That guy's been backed up by several different people now that have vouched for the quality of pig he's got. So we're picking 15 up from him today. That's just a little tidbit of my experience that I've had over the years with different breeders. Make sure you're finding somebody that's reputable. Make sure you're not getting someone that's just buying pigs secondhand. I'm trying to make a quick buck. That's not what you're after. Let me go ahead and get this trailer hooked up the rest of the way here, and then we'll get on the road. 15 piggies all loaded up, ready to go back to the farm. Well, I'll tell you one thing, I'm whooped, but we got it home. It's about 8.30 now, a little later than I wanted to be. You plan for these things, but then they always end up taking more or less time than you always planned on. So just something you gotta have built into your schedule. We got everybody here. Everybody seems to be alive and well, getting used to and acclimated with the new pasture. I've got their shelter set up with the straw, like I said, it's supposed to get down around that 40 degree mark tonight. So just give them a little extra added warmth. I'm sure they get in there and get all bundled in here in a little bit. Got the hot wire on and going. They've already been into that, investigating that and gotten zapped. It looks like they're starting to already get familiar with it. We'll leave them just like this in this configuration for about the next seven to 10 days. Then when I move them back here, like I said I was gonna do earlier, I'll set that hot wire up on all four sides. That way they can get used to that being a perimeter and we'll start taking hog panels away one by one. Eventually, I'll build up enough trust with them guys to know they'll stay inside the fence and everything be good to go. That's enough for me today, it's been a long one. I haven't really had much time to sit down. Days like this, it's still nice to be able to get these guys on the farm. Kind of feel like we got something going on again. If you guys got any suggestions or questions as we go, feel free to leave those down in the comment box and I'll address those as they come in. This is just a culmination of where I've kind of come from and what's worked best for me over the last five years or so. It's one of those things where I feel like we're just always going to be adapting, trying new things, see if we can get this just a little bit more efficient. So far, this has been the easiest year getting these guys on farm. That's all I've got for you today, guys. I appreciate you guys checking this out. I appreciate you watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one.